Number 62, assuming ideal solution behavior, what is the freezing point of a solution of dibromobenzene, which is C6H4Br2, in 0.250 kilograms of benzene if the solution boils at 83.5 degrees Celsius? Okie dokie. All right, so we're looking for the freezing point, right? So this is some type of temperature that's lowercase f. So TF just means freezing point. So we don't know what this freezing point is of this solution. Now, in this case, we have dibromobenzene, which is C6H4Br2, being placed in or into benzene. Now, by the wording here, a solute always gets placed into a solvent. So in this case, since we have the C6H4Br2 being placed into the benzene, this C6H4Br2 is the solute, and the benzene is going to be the solvent. Now, the only thing that basically we know is that we have a boiling point, right? They're saying that this total solution, and a solution is always the solute plus the solvent combined. The solution is boiling at 83.5. So they give us a TB of 83.5. Okay, so from this, all right, they, they're looking for a freezing point, but they're giving us information about boiling. So maybe I'm going to use my, my boiling point elevation uh, formula. And what's the boiling point elevation formula? Up oh, here goes my voice. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure when the voice just wants to not work, but we're just going to keep rocking with it, right? Anyway, the boiling point, uh, formula is this one right here. Delta TB equals KB times molality, that's like this little italicized M, times the I value. Now, this delta TB is the change in the boiling point. Now, the change always comes from the pure amount of the temperature in which you don't have a solution. It's the pure boiling point of your solvent, always your solvent, never your solute. So it's the change from the pure amount to what your solution is boiling at. This temperature, 83.5, is the solution temp. So we do have to go back into a textbook to find out what that pure boiling point is if it's just benzene. And just know that benzene is C6H6, 6, 6, 6, 6. <laughs> C6, C6H6. So the pure boiling point of benzene is 80.1. Now keep in mind that your delta T is always going to be a positive value, ne ne never a negative. So you just have to uh, subtract these two values in which that you will get a positive value. So in this case, we have a solution boiling point of uh, 83.5 degrees Celsius, and the pure boiling point is 80.1. That's the one that we found on the textbook. So in order to find that change, change always means subtraction. So 83.5 minus the 80.1. 83.5 minus 80.1. And we get 3.4. So that's the change, that's the difference between the pure solvent and the solution now, and that's going to be the delta T, B. Now, delta T, B always equals the boiling point elevation constant, that's the KB, and this is solely reliant on the solvent. That's why it's really important to know which one of these two is the solvent. And also, we have to go into the textbook to find out what the KB value is for benzene because benzene is our solvent, and we get 2.53. So this was extra information that maybe on a test or quiz they would provide you, uh, because these types of numbers generally, generally, uh, they're not required to be memorized. But each teacher or professor is, is different, so just always double check. Now, the M is the molality. Molality always equals moles divided by kilograms. But in this case, they gave me the kilograms of the solvent, but I don't know the moles, right? They didn't tell me any moles. So I can't figure this out just yet. But maybe, 
right? If we have this and we have this, maybe we can solve for molality if we know the I value. The I value is the van Hoff factor. And the van Hoff factor just basically determines whether your solute is going to act as an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. All covalent compounds, generally speaking, if you do have a covalent compound, you're, you're going to be a non-electrolyte. And your I value will be equal to 1. This 1 means that in your solvent, this is chilling as one whole substance. This is not breaking down into 6 carbons and 4 hydrogens. It's just... It's all keeping it together. C6H4Br2, one thing in your solvent. And carbon, hydrogen, bromine, these are all nonmetals, right? So this would be a covalent molecule. So my I value here would be equal to 1. So we know this. So first off, we're going to solve for the molality. Maybe that will help us with finding out the freezing point. So let's try it out. 3.4 equals uh, the Kb, 2.53 times molality, which is x, times by 1 in this case, but anything times by 1 is itself, so we could just, you know, forget about it. <laughs> Divide on both sides by 2.53. Can you guess what state I'm from? <laughs> forget about it. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Um, 3.4 divided by 2.53. I get x equals 1.344. And this is molality. Okay. Now, how is this going to help me with my freezing point? Well, now I think to myself and I say, do I know a formula for freezing point depression? And yeah, it's basically very similar to your boiling point elevation formula. It's this right here. The only things that are basically changing is that now you're dealing with a change in your freezing point. So change in freezing point, And just like the other one, this value can always be positive, can only be positive. Change in your freezing point is going to equal now the freezing point depression constant. Once again, we're still dealing with benzene, so I had to go into the textbook to find out what the benzene KF value is. And this, just like the other one, KB, this is solely reliant on the solvent. The solvent is benzene, and this would be a 5.12 degrees Celsius per molality. And would you look at that? Now, I have my molality because it's the same solution. So if you're using the solution for your boiling point, you can use the same molality for your freezing point because you didn't change anything about your solution. So this would be 1.344 molality. And the I value, since everything is staying the same, that's going to be a 1. So... Let's figure out my delta TF, the change in the freezing point. Then I can find the actual freezing point because I know a KF value. We just found out the molality and we knew the I value from before. So delta TF, the freezing point, the change in the freezing point is going to be 5.12 times that molality we found times one. So we could just, you know, times the two of them. I'm going to take this number just to be a little bit more exact times 5.12 and I get a delta TF, the change in the freezing point of 6.8, I guess we'll do 6.9, right? Or maybe 6.88 degrees Celsius. Now this is important guys that keep in mind that this is the change, right? And a freezing point, it's called a freezing point depression. So a freezing point of a solution can only go lower. A freezing point will never go higher than your pure value. 
So the freezing point of a solution will always be lower than what the pure one is. So if your pure freezing point, which of course we had to look that up, right? Because this question didn't give it to us. Uh, if the pure freezing point was 5.50 degrees Celsius, and we know that now we have a change of 6.88 degrees Celsius, would we add these two together to get my final freezing point or would we subtract? What do you think, guys? Yeah, we would subtract because that freezing point, that new freezing point is always going to be lower and lower is subtraction. So we just have to subtract these two numbers and we are good to go. 5.5 minus this just to kind of get a, a more uh, accurate answer. And there it is. The new delta TF is negative, and I guess we should bring it out to the tenths, 1.4 degrees Celsius. And that is the final answer. Now, you might be saying, Christina, wait, 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 wait. We didn't do anything with this kilograms. So, <laughs> sometimes they might give you more information than is needed. So always trust the process. We didn't have to do anything with these kilograms because we were trying to solve for the molality. Um, we didn't have to use this formula because there was an M for your delta TB and an M for your delta TF. So whatever you solved for here, bloop, plugged it right in. Didn't have to do anything with these kilograms. So sometimes they will give you extra information, all right? But always trust your process, trust your math, and you will get the right answer at the end, okay? All right, so thank you so much for, you know, coming here, viewing the video. I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and I try to get back to you as much as I can. Um, keep studying hard. You guys rock. Good luck on your testing quizzes. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.